Hi, I'm Jamie Davis for Innovations in Patient Care. We're here at EMS Today 2012 with the EMS 10 Awards again this year. And I'm really excited because of just so many innovators and people finding new ways to improve the way we provide care for people. And I'm most excited about this last interview uh, because it has to do with a, a little understood aspect of EMS care, wilderness EMS. And many of you may have seen or perhaps taken a wilderness EMS class and understood it as an EMS professional, a paramedic and EMT, and how you apply a certain type of care to patients in those settings. But what about your medical director? Do they actually understand wilderness EMS, how it's structured and what are some of its needs? So a group of doctors actually got together and put together a wilderness EMS program for medical directors. And I'm really excited to have Dr. Mike Millen here, uh, Michael Millen uh, from Maryland. Uh, you're actually mm -hmm. the medical director at BWI Hospital. Uh, or right, BWI right, airport. airport, which mm -hmm. is interesting because I'm sure there's not a lot of, I mean, anybody who knows is just south of Baltimore. There's not a lot of wilderness around uh, the, the airport there, but you do a lot of uh, hiking in some other parts of the state, some more rural areas of the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, wilderness EMS really isn't just about the being in the middle of nowhere. It's really about the circumstances in which you find yourself with an injury with a patient who's injured. Mm, that's correct. Um, our idea is that um, wilderness for us is defined as any area that requires a specialized skill set. Uh, and so wilderness could actually be in the ditch off the side of a road. Uh, and if the EMS needed to take care of that patient, it requires a specialized skill set. That could be wilderness. Um, so while um, wilderness is often thought of as someplace uh, in the middle of nowhere, and one of my colleagues you'll speak with is a medical director someplace in the middle of nowhere, I do wilderness EMS in the state of Maryland, um, which has wilderness stuff nearby. I do a lot of hiking uh, close by uh, in the Baltimore metropolitan area, and there really is true wilderness even in the Baltimore metropolitan area. Now, you actually uh, wrote some changes to the Maryland statewide protocol. Uh, mm -hmm. I always knew there was this section at the back of the protocols that was wilderness EMS protocols for the state of Maryland, but you've actually expanded and changed some of those protocols. Mm -hmm. What were some of the primary changes you implemented there? Um, probably the biggest change that we made uh, to that protocol is the ability for uh, jurisdiction to be called a wilderness EMS jurisdiction, even if they're not based with one of the local fire departments. Um, and so it really is, again, individuals who have a specialized skill set, um, they are allowed to now use this protocol as long as they have a memorandum of understanding with a transporting jurisdiction. Uh, for example, one of the groups that I hope to work with in the future with this protocol is a canine search and rescue group, Chesapeake Canine Search and Rescue, um, which in the future, now with this new protocol, can be called a wilderness EMS jurisdiction. They have providers with their jurisdiction who are medically trained, they go and search, find someone with their dogs. Now they can actually start taking care of that person with medical direction. The interesting thing and the reason we decided to, we needed to develop this program uh, is that even though you may have EMS providers who are wilderness trained, the medical directors that function with those EMS providers may not actually have wilderness medicine experience. Uh, and so the idea of our program was to take EMS medical directors that don't have wilderness medicine experience or physicians who have wilderness medicine experience but not EMS experience and to be able to combine the two so that that person then really understands what wilderness medicine medical direction is really all about. So really, I, and this is interesting because I didn't realize this, but just like there's a wilderness EMS, there is a wilderness medicine. There is a different way of practicing medicine as a physician in a wilderness setting. There really is. Um, one of the biggest things you might actually think of, not think about in the urban setting, just about every medication you use in the urban EMS setting is going to be an IV form medication. Mm -hmm. In the wilderness setting, that just doesn't work. IVs in the wilderness are very difficult to maintain. And so most medications you use in the wilderness are gonna be oral medications, which is a very different kind of a thing. Um, so even something simple as that uh, it can be a big thing and you really need a medical director who understands that environment in order to be able to provide good medical direction. What's the biggest challenge that a medical director uh, faces when trying to wrap their head around this kind of program if you talk to other medical directors that are taking this, this class? I think probably the biggest challenge is just the realization that this is a real thing. Uh, and that's why we are so excited about this award. To us, what this award means is there really is recognition by our peers that Wilderness EMS is a real entity and subspecialty of emergency medical services. Well, that's really exciting. Michael, as, as an awardee here, and, and congratulations to you and, and your uh, co-award uh, winners for this award, uh, 
what are your thoughts about this type of program, this recognition of innovation uh, in the EMS setting, and, and certainly it could be applied to medicine in general, I think. Uh, what, what do you think of programs like this? I think this is a fantastic thing. Emergency Medical Services needs to grow, uh, and it's going to grow by people who are innovators and putting time and energy into new ideas. Uh, so this really encourages that, and it's a wonderful thing. Well, I want to thank you very much. Congratulations again. And we'll, we'll hopefully uh, keep in touch and uh, talk to you again soon. Fantastic. And I want to thank all of you for checking out this episode of Innovations in Patient Care. You can find our audio program in iTunes under Innovations in Patient Care. And this video will be posted under several channels in YouTube, uh, via Facebook, and with our sponsors, Physio Control, as well. So you want to make sure you look for this and the rest of the videos in this series. Thank you.